Hi, my name is Mike Conley, and I'm going to present to you in the next 30 minutes 12 growth strategies that can add some serious doors to your portfolio. My company is called East Bay Property Management. We're located in Northern California in a town called Fremont between San Jose and San Francisco. And in the four and a half years I've been in business, I've opened up 500 doors and my average door, my average home that I manage is about $3,100 a month. Now I've been in business long enough to know, frankly, I've never met any property manager that's opened 500 doors right out of the gate their first five years. And I say this not to brag, it's just a fact to get your attention and hopefully inspire you to implement these growth strategies because if they work for me, I know they can work for you. Well, growth strategy number one is very simple, direct mail postcards, just like these. Nothing fancy, nothing sophisticated, but direct mail postcards have worked for me and they'll work for you. In my eight city territory, I have a total of 17,000 absentee owners. These are owners of rental homes, and I know this because my title company has provided me with an Excel spreadsheet from each city of those owners whose mailing address is different than their residence. That tells me it's a rental. That's a very important list for you to have if you're going to do direct mail. So to those 17,000 absentee owners, I mail 5,000 cards a month, minimum. And those 5,000 cards means that every one of those owners are getting at least four cards from me each year. The cards cost me 30 cents total. Five cents for the card itself. I get all my printing done through Vistaprint. I can create my own card. They're very cost effective. And then another 25 cents to my mail house for them to label it and mail it to the mailbox. So a total of 30 cents a card times 5,000 cards a month is $1,500. What does that produce? Like clockwork, four to six new accounts each month. That means my acquisition costs using direct mail is right around $300. It's so cost effective. Realtors use them to solicit listings. Realtors use them to buy homes. Why don't property managers use them to solicit uh, owners of rental houses? Now, if you're gonna use direct mail, you've gotta make sure that it's a jumbo size card, number one, that it's hard hitting. For instance, this last card that I mailed uh, has to do with COVID-19. So I'm guaranteeing that during COVID-19, I'm going to find them the optimum tenant at the best rent, and I'm going to take best care of their home. On the back of the card, I've actually got a woman with a mask on, and my text says that COVID-19 has changed the rules for landlords, and it really has here in the Bay Area. So I also state we'll make you more money and we'll simplify your life. What you're looking to do with your postcard is hit those owners who either have a vacancy currently or have a vacancy coming up. That's about 10% of your mailing. So for every 5,000 cards you mail out in a month, 500 are going to owners who have a vacancy. And those are ones that are most likely to use your services. You want to make sure you have on the card the words call now. You want to make sure it's four colors. You want to have your cell number on the card as big as possible. Nothing is more important to me than taking a call from a prospective owner. And you don't want to give up after one or two mailings. You want to be consistent. You're going to, take, uh, you're, you're going to make four mailings a year and you will see the results. If you would like all 16 of the cards that I've used over the last four and a half years, I'll, I'll gladly send them to you in a PDF. You just have to email me. I'll send you the cards. That's number one. Well, growth strategy number two is a newsletter. Now, I made the transition from direct mail postcards to a newsletter two years ago. It was a little bit of a risk because postcards were working. But when it comes to a newsletter, it's still direct mail, which I believe in. But number two, you're helping a landlord instead of just trying to sell them. It's also going to make you the expert 
in your trade area because when they read a newsletter they think you're the expert and you have to come up with creative and compelling copy every 90 days. Do not steal articles from other magazines on property management or other newsletters. It's got to come from your heart and soul and be specific to your trade area. Now when it comes to cost, or excuse me, I've covered in the newsletter items like rehab tips, screening tips, reasons not to renew a lease, the importance of inspections, what's a 1031 exchange, what's the 1% rule of investing, I've used pricing strategies, I've shared tax deductions, uh, company photos go into the newsletter, graphs and charts, local real estate trends, I always put a cartoon in, and I advertise my seminars, which I'll get to in a moment, and the, the all-important cap rate. So there's uh, just a litany of items that you can put in the newsletter. And here's how it breaks down cost-wise. The four-color newsletter that I have here cost me 58 cents. That includes the design, the printing, and the mailing. I uh, have a printing house in Montana that's way cheaper than anybody else print me this newsletter. Now at 58 cents, I cannot afford this on my own, but I split the cost with my broker who sells homes. I don't sell property, and so we share it 50-50. What does he get out of it? 50% of the copy. So half of the copy in the newsletter is dedicated to property management and the other half of the copy is dedicated to the owner possibly selling their home and doing a 1031 exchange outside of the Bay Area. So that breaks down to 29 cents a piece. That's cheaper than a postcard. So I mail these out four times a year to 17,000 uh, landlords on my list that comes to twenty two thousand dollars a year that's the majority of my marketing costs and uh, the results have been phenomenal I've sold uh, my, my uh, broker who happens to be my brother has sold 20 homes through this newsletter and I've opened up uh, just so many new property management accounts a newsletter works and if you want a copy of all eight of my newsletters that I've used in the last two years, you just email me and I'll send you a PDF. That's growth strategy number two. Well, growth strategy number three is putting on a landlord seminar. Basically, what you're going to do is uh, every quarter put on a two-hour seminar entitled The 12 Basics of Property Management, and you're going to invite through some powerful marketing, self-managing owners that are not doing business with you. And you're going to share all of your secrets, your tips, your techniques, your forms in those two hours. Basically, if you can't beat them, join them. In the seminar, you're going to share rehab techniques, the lease, the pros of a pet, pricing strategies, advertising strategies, the importance of maintenance, tenant screening, inspections, insurance, tax deductions, and potential liability for the owner. Why on earth would you want to do that? Let me give you some of the benefits. Number one, you're going to have several people at the end of the seminar say, you handle my property. I'm not going to try to manage it as professionally as you. You take it over. That's going to happen with a, a couple of uh, attendees immediately. And then, you're going to open new accounts eventually because when a tenant gives notice, let's say six months after an attendee has come to your seminar, they're going to uh, pull out your name and they're going to say, you take over. I, I loved your seminar. Um, you take over the property management. Number three, you're going to be perceived as the expert, not only by potential owners, but by your existing owners because you're going to advertise the seminar to them as well. And when the, your existing owners get upset with you, and we all know they will eventually, they're going to stick with you because you're perceived as the expert. They're not going to go to a property manager that knows more than you do. And then finally, you're also going to be uh, charging $59 for the seminar. So you're going to recoup a good chunk of your advertising costs never give the seminar away. If I had to put a dollar value on the seminar, 
I would say it's worth two thousand dollars to an attendee. Now they can bring their spouse for free, their son or daughter for free, and of course your existing owners can come for free, but everybody else is fifty nine bucks. They bring a check when they walk into the room. Oh, one more point that you're providing education to a totally uneducated audience. You're the tide that's lifting all boats because these self-managing owners all think they know more than they do. Now, logistics wise, you're going to want your seminar to be two hours long, 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. There's about 40 PowerPoint slides that I use. I'm making those available to you. you all you have to do is email me. You're going to pro provide also forms, a tenant handbook, and a copy of uh, your lease to the attendees. I always provide a light brunch before the seminar begins. I charge $59 and I get a feedback form from everybody. At the end of the seminar I have a drawing and in order to enter the drawing for a uh, dinner for two at a restaurant I have to get everybody's feedback form. So if 60 people attend my seminar I've got 60 forms with everybody's cell number, email, and uh, name. That's very important. Now to market your seminar, guess what? That's It's on every single page in my newsletter or postcard. So not only am I advertising my management services in my postcard and newsletter, I'm telling them about the seminar. So it's in my newsletter. I also email and text everybody, every lead in my CRM, and I email um, to all my existing owners as well. And that's how I'm able to get 60 to 80 attendees four times a year, Saturday morning, to attend my 12 basics to property management. If you mail out 5,000 postcards or newsletters each month, I can guarantee that you're going to have at least 12 to 15 attendees at your seminar. It will make you the expert. It's a great growth strategy. Well, growth strategy number four is my presentation folder. Whenever you're making a presentation to a prospective owner, you have your own presentation book, but this is what I leave every owner. Hopefully, I'm leaving with the management agreement, but I'm leaving them with this. It's a what I uh, believe is a fair exchange. And in my presentation folder, which by the way I've created on Vistaprint, are eight pieces of compelling sales tools. Number one is my company photo. That's on the inside of uh, the uh, folder. And then I've got a rent analysis from Rent Range. I've also backed up the rent analysis with two to three comps from Zillow. And then I've got my management agreement, which I always go over with the owner. I'm going to get to my management agreement a little bit later. I've got a comparison sheet of how we rank versus the owner managing the property themselves. I've got my five guarantees, my pre-move-in checklist, and a copy of my latest newsletter. And if I believe that they're shopping another property management company, I have on the back 10 questions to ask any property management company. And uh, I, I just believe this is a great folder. If you'd like a PDF of the folder and everything in it, just email me and I'll gladly send it to you. Well, growth strategy number five is having a compelling rehab board. When I go and make a presentation to a prospective owner, I walk the house with he or she and outline all the rehab that's going to be needed before a new tenant moves in. When I get back to my office, I'll summarize that in an email with the approximate costs and I always give the owner three choices. They can either handle the rehab themselves with their own people, they can use my rehab people and work with them directly, or they can use my rehab people and have me oversee it. The least desired option for me is number three. I really don't want to oversee rehab, but mo most often the owners will have me do that for a fee. So. When I uh, walk the house with them, I go over things like their, uh, their flooring, uh, the kitchen counters, quartz or maybe granite. 
I, we talk about their blinds, we look at carpet samples, we, look at, we talk about paint, we look at baseboards, and when I walk into the house, I have this large rehab board with all these samples of laminate, quartz, blinds, paint, carpet, and it makes you look like a pro. The first year that I was in the business, I didn't have this board. I just walked in with samples in my hand. But you go in with this board, which is very simple to make. Matter of fact, I'll send you a PDF of my board. All you have to do is email me. It makes you look like a rehab expert. This is a great sales tool. Growth strategy number six is a very simple, concise management agreement. Not all management agreements are created equal. The California Association of Realtors Management Agreement is a nightmare. It's five pages long, very small font, written by an attorney for an attorney. The first couple times I used it when I got into this business four and a half years ago, the owners would roll their eyes they could, I could tell they could, were starting to get a headache and they'd say, let me review this, I'll get back to you in a few days. I said, I gotta ditch this agreement and replace it with something simpler. So what I've done is uh, created my own agreement. It's three pages long, double spaced. It's written in plain English. It's got all my pricing, my add-on fees, my five guarantees, and it's been reviewed by a reputable law firm to make sure that I've got my indemnification clause, I'm added to the owner's insurance policy, my, do my I's are dotted, my T's are crossed. What's so important about the management agreement is that I'm able to go over it with the owner at the end of my sales presentation in about five minutes. And it's very simple. Uh, after I'm done going over the agreement with them, I put the pen down, I let him or her pick it up. Nothing is more exciting than walking out of a owner's um, rental home with a signed management agreement. It makes my day. So if you want a copy of my management agreement, just send me an email and I'll uh, uh, send you a PDF. But that's growth strategy number six, simple, concise management agreement. Well, growth strategy number seven is entitled BombBomb. Bomb. And all BombBomb Bomb is, is a marketing company that allows you to integrate a video of yourself into an email. And when I've come back from a presentation to an owner, whether they've purchased our services or not, I always recap the meeting in an email and include in the email a BombBomb Bomb video of myself. When I start the video, I hold up a sign next to my face that has the owner's name and their property on the sign so it uh, personalizes the video. And basically what you have on top of your uh, uh, screen on your computer is a camera and then next to the screen you have a microphone. This allows you to send your video. And I use the BombBomb Bomb videos for not only follow-up after presentations but I use them for lease renewals. It's very important for my existing owners to see my face at least a couple times a year. Large repairs, when I have to explain uh, big repairs to owners, I'll use a bomb bomb video. Any kind of important communication. In fact, there's a property manager out of San Antonio, Brad Larson, with RentWorks, that has bomb bomb set up for all of the employees in his office and he has a quota of how many bomb bomb videos they have to send out each week. So it uh, goes right into the middle of an email and this is what it looks like. It's a great sales tool for uh, those people that are receiving an email that may not read it otherwise. They'll, they will watch a video and it's been uh, very helpful for me. So I recommend it to anybody. That's growth strategy number seven. Well, growth strategy number eight are my five guarantees. So my first guarantee is my 21-day leasing guarantee. And this basically states that once a home is ready to be shown, and it's at a price that both the owner and I agree upon, and the owner's allowing me to advertise it small pet negotiable, I will have a lease signed within 21 days or 
my first two months management fees are waived. And this keeps me on my toes. Every Monday, I'm looking at all my listings, saying, do I need to adjust the price downward here, or am I okay? Do I have enough traction? Because I don't want to give up a couple months management fees. Number two is my eviction guarantee. Now, I have not had one eviction from any tenant that I placed in the last four and a half years. However, I've had several evictions from tenants that I've taken over. But my eviction guarantee states that if I place a tenant that I have to evict, I pay all the eviction costs up to $2,000. My third guarantee is my pet guarantee. I believe so strongly in uh, the owner allowing me to advertise his property small pet negotiable that I say to the owner that if a small pet under 20 pounds does any damage to the house that exceeds the security deposit, I'll pay the difference. That hasn't happened yet and that's why I offer the guarantee. My fourth guarantee is the on-time rent guarantee. And basically, I'm able to um, uh, deposit the owner's draws around the fourth or fifth of every month because our rents are due on the first, late after the second. However, if I am not able to get the owner his draw by the 10th of the month, then my services are waived for that month. And then finally, my easy exit guarantee. With all my owners, I work month to month. All my leases with my tenants are year to year, but with my owners, we go monthly. So if I'm not able to rectify a problem with one of my owners, then he can simply give me 30 days notice. And trust me, this works both ways. There have been times when I uh, have given my owners a 30-day notice, just a handful. But uh, this is one up on the competition for sure. So these are my five guarantees. I recommend all of them for you. If I can implement these into my business, I know you can too. That's strategy number eight. Well, growth strategy number nine is my website. More and more, I'm hearing from prospective owners who call me saying, Mike, I've been on your website and that's why I'm calling. And I love hearing that because it lets me know that I've got content on my site that's attr attracting prospective owners and the $1,500 a month I'm paying my SEO company is paying off. And I love my site in particular because not only does it attract owners, but it sells. It's constantly selling. It's constantly in motion. How many sites in property management have you seen that have 110 videos on it? They're all videos of myself. They're all three to seven minutes long, covering every kind of property management topic imaginable, from deposit returns to tax deductions. I've also got downloadable forms on my site, market updates in all eight cities that I manage, transparent pricing, not only my fees, but my add-on fees. I've also got uh, a number of my 200 Google reviews. I've got my top five competitors in my trade area on my site and how I stack up against them. I've also got a company bio, helpful links on my site. I've got my five guarantees. My newsletters are on my site and my landlord seminars, a kind of an abbreviated version of each of my two landlord seminars. And of course, I have my cell number. So I also, uh, with my SEO company, Upkeep Marketing, have a website that's constantly in motion because I'm adding videos every single quarter. The SEO company is fine tuning my keywords. They're adding backlinks, links to Facebook, writing blogs, and it's one reason that I have gone from 800 monthly visitors just less than 12 months ago to currently 3,000 monthly visitors. So go to my website, eastbaypmc.com, lift anything you want, but uh, it's been a great sales tool for me. Thanks. Well, number 10 is buying doors from another property management company. Now, I've been to a number of seminars on acquisitions, and frankly, it's not part of my growth strategy. When it comes to acquisitions, you're going to end up in a portfolio finding a lot of homes that are in below average condition. You're also not going to know uh, everything about the owners in the portfolio. I like to be able to interview owners as much as they're interviewing me. Uh, when it comes to a presentation. 
And number three, it's costly. The acquisition costs in uh, buying a property management door can be anywhere from one to three thousand bucks. Where I've showed earlier, acquisition costs with direct mail are just a few hundred dollars. But every now and then you can get lucky. Because I'd only been in business one month, this was four and a half years ago, when I sent a postcard, this card here, to over a thousand realtors in my eight cities, telling them that I, that I was offering a referral fee to any client that they recommended that needed property management. And sure enough, I had a realtor come into my office unannounced with the postcard saying that he was willing to sell 24 doors to me that uh, he'd been managing for a number of years. He was ready to get out of the business for the uh, referral fee per door that I'd offered. So I signed a non-disclosure agreement with uh, the realtor, went and looked at all 24 properties from the street. Most of them were in average condition, but at that time I was willing to take pretty much any door I could and uh, looked at his books, what he was getting each month, and ended up signing a purchase agreement with them just several days later. Fast forward four and a half years, and I have 21 of the 24 accounts. One ended up selling their home through my brother Tom. The other two owners went their own way, but I've got 21 out of 24. So the moral of the story is, send postcards on a regular basis to all realtors in your territory because you're going to find a realtor that manages a number of properties that simply wants to exit the business at a reasonable price but more importantly turn it over to a property management company they can trust. So this is growth strategy number 10. Well growth strategy number 11 is a landlord investor seminar. Now in strategy number three, I talked about my seminar entitled The 12 Basics of Property Management. This seminar follows up that seminar, it's on the following Saturday, and I entitle it, Should I Hold, Sell, or Exchange My Rental Home? And what you're doing is appealing to uh, owners out there not doing business with you that are thinking of selling their rental and doing a 1031 exchange outside of the area or maybe just cashing out. So in this seminar I cover uh, topics like the real estate forecast in the Bay Area for the next 12 to 24 months. We talk about the all-important cap rate. The cap rate for a rental home here in the East Bay is horrible. It's about two to two and a half percent. It's the lowest cap rate of any type of rental property anywhere in the United States. And that's because the value of a home here in the East Bay is just so great compared to the amount of rent that you can get for it. So this really works in my favor when I show the owners how they could sell their rental home here and buy other rental property outside of the Bay Area for um, the same amount of money and get a much greater return, it's very attractive. We also talk about the 1% rule of investing. We talk about the 1031 exchange basics. Uh, investing in homes versus condos versus two to four units. We talk about the pros and cons of investing in commercial real estate. We go over the criteria on how to choose a state, city, or neighborhood that makes sense for them. And then, of course, we get to the last topic, which is selling their rental property at maximum price. So the whole goal of this seminar is to get owners to say, you know what? I'm going to give you the listing to sell my property so that I can do a 1031 exchange or cash out. So my, I'm doing this seminar in conjunction with my broker who sells real estate, that's my brother Tom. Through this seminar, and I put on eight of them over the last two years, we've sold 20 homes through the, the seminar and the newsletter. Now, the logistics of the seminar are very similar to my 12 Basics of Property Management. It's two hours long from 10 to 12. This seminar always follows the week after my property management seminar because I can get everybody from the property management seminar to come to this one. 
The last seminar I had pre-COVID was in March. I had 120 attendees here in my office lobby. It was so large I had to break it off into a morning group and an afternoon group. This seminar is free. You're not charging anybody anything. Uh, I've got my 40 PowerPoint slides that I can provide to you by just emailing me. Uh, I always provide brunch. I give them a handout, feedback forms, and I always get their name, cell, and email on the feedback form because before they leave, they give that to me and um, I enter it, enter it into a drawing. So uh, this seminar, I advertise again on my newsletter. I also advertise it to my own owners. Even though I'm managing property for them, I want to show them both sides of the coin. I want what's best for my owners. So that's my fiduciary responsibility. Sometimes I've had owners come that I'm managing property for that have said, Mike, you know, based on your seminar, I'm going to sell the house. So I, I want what's best for them. Now, if you want my PowerPoint slides and a podcast of um, this seminar, then just email me and I'll gladly send it to you. But it's a great growth strategy. Well, growth strategy number 12 is entitled, When My Owner Wants to Sell. Now, when I'm making a presentation to a prospective owner, I love being able to say to the owner, we don't sell real estate. Our company, East Bay Property Management, is solely focused on managing real estate, unlike all the other property management companies out there that sell real estate first and then do property management as a side business. I love being able to say that. Now, having said that, when one of my owners decides to sell their property, I want a piece of the action. And that's why two years ago, I created a real estate company called Landlord Real Estate Team. How many real estate companies do you know that are solely focused on rental property? All my brother Tom, who's the managing broker of the company, does is focus on landlords and rental property. And that's because Tom is a landlord himself, which is very important because only 5% of realtors have rentals themselves. The other 95% of realtors out there can't empathize with landlords when it comes to understanding tenants or like uh, Tom wrote the book on rehab because most rentals, when a tenant moves out and the home is going to go up for sale, is going to need significant rehab. And Tom knows rehab and he uh, knows the right amount of rehab to put into a home before selling it. He's very familiar with the 1031 exchange process because he's done a number of 1031 exchanges himself personally. He pays for all the rehab himself up front and has reimbursed it by the seller at the time of closing. He pays for all the inspections up front and he gives the commissions for a dual listing back to the seller. He only signs a 40-day listing agreement with the seller as well. So all of these things give Tom a competitive edge in um, uh, getting the listing from the owner that's decided to sell and of course I get a piece of Tom's commission. So in the two years that we have been putting on our landlord investment seminars and created this landlord real estate company, we've sold 20 homes together. 20 homes that I've referred to Tom that he's ended up getting the listing and closing the sale. You can go to our website, www.landlordret.com and steal anything you want. I shouldn't say steal, affectionately adopt anything you want as long as you're not in my territory. But this is a great addition to your business and you're still able to say, I only manage real estate, I don't sell it. Well, as I close here, I want to say that growth just doesn't come from, you know, 12 growth strategies. It also comes from a great staff, which I've been blessed to have, and from me being in the trenches 55 to 60 hours a week since I got into this business four and a half years ago. In addition, I've learned so much 
from mentors around the country that are in the property management business, specifically in an organization called NARPM, the National Association of Residential Property Managers. If you're not part of this organization as a property manager, you need to join. Great speakers like Melissa Prandy here in the Bay Area, Tom Sedlak in Minnesota, Andy Probst in Idaho, Mark Cunningham in Colorado, Scott Brady, Los Angeles, and my favorite, Brad Larson out of San Antonio, Texas. And then there are great websites that you can learn from, like Brad Larson's Property Management Mastermind. Great podcasts and a lot of great growth tools on that site. Mark Cunningham as well, phenomenal uh, teacher and coach, and he's got a lot of great video content on his site. Uh, Rental Income Podcast with Dan Lane. Every week he has uh, investors uh, present that are just phenomenal. And then Bruce uh, Norris uh, here in California. You listen to his podcast, you feel like uh, you've gotten a master's in real estate. So all of these uh, have contributed, contributed greatly to uh, my growth. Now, if you want to email me, you can, and I will send you a PDF of all my direct mail sample postcards, all my newsletters, my PowerPoint and handouts for my 12 Basics seminar, my PowerPoint and podcast for my seminar, Should I Hold, Sell, or Exchange My Rental House, I'll send you a PDF of my presentation folder and a PDF of my rehab board up close, as well as my management agreement. All yours for just emailing me at mike at eastbaypmc.com. That's all for now. Good luck and good business.